Okay, we're continuing on with some uh, dynamic logic. Uh, here we're starting to talk about uh, clocked dynamic logic. Of course, dynamic logic doesn't operate at DC, so we need a clock. Uh, the first variations that came out in CMOS uh, basically uh, contain too many clocks and uh, you know were of a little utility. So the first few slides will sort of go over the, the history of it, but there are some things that are in common here that you'll see later on. We have basically a, a, a logic block, and we're going to have something that allows us to to pre-charge it and evaluate it. But in this particular case, obviously, there's too many clocks. Uh, that's just another uh, variation on the same theme. And uh, the main difficulty with the too many clocks is you know, too much area and uh, too much synchronization of the clocks required. So people started developing alternative techniques. And one of the ones that uh, probably is still around to some degree is uh, domino logic. And uh, basically, we'll just get to the schematic of it. And the idea is that we take our our NMOS logic block that we're quite familiar with, and we go through this notion of a precharge and evaluate phase. So, will allow us to precharge this node here, and then when phi goes high, we can evaluate this logic block and the, the domino logic. Just put a, an inverter out here. So, uh, it was useful, but not all uh, uh, logic uh, can be implemented with domino logic. If you needed A and A bar, for example, that would be difficult to generate. Uh, so migrating forward a little bit, this is just an example of what how you'd implement a, an AND kind of gate in that kind of structure. And we had, uh, well, I guess in this case, an AND gate because there's a buffer on the output. But that's the basic idea. This is just a slight little comparison, not too old, 2010, that sort of showed some static logic and domino logic for, uh, I guess, a ripple carry adder in two different technologies, 65 nanometers and 45 nanometers. And basically what it uh, presented was that, let's say, if we just focus on the 45 nanometers, there really isn't a lot of difference between the static and the, do uh, the uh, domino logic. So in this particular case, delays are pretty comparable, the power delay product pretty comparable, and the area pretty comparable. So uh, perhaps in the past it made more sense to use some of these structures, but uh, you know, static uh, uh, CMOS is certainly a, a contender even for these high-speed logic type blocks. Anyway, moving along a little bit now, we saw the, the dynamic uh, logic block called Domino. And this is just a variation on it where you alternate between the, the uh, an NMOS uh, to implement the logic and the next stage, the PMOS to implement the logic. So uh, this one we uh, understand quite reasonably. You pre-charge it, which means that you uh, will tie this node high and conditionally it'll discharge. And the opposite case happens for the PMOS logic block where we we basically pre-charge this output node to ground and then conditionally pull it up to VDD. So uh, the main question might be down here is, uh, you know, what would a, a degrading voltage mean now? So over here it's kind of clear to see what, what's happening. We cheat precharge this node and it could degrade because we'll turn this transistor off and we you know, may pull it down or we may leave it at, uh, at VDD, but it could uh, degrade and then we'd ask ourselves what happens here when we precharge this node to zero what happens to it when its voltage degrades. So you should be able to answer that. And just a couple more details about uh, some of the constraints for uh, alternating logic. So don't want to go over it in a great deal of detail. It's sort of in the you know, may not need to know category. But this notion of, of an alternating NNP block is still quite important, as well as the, the pre-charge and evaluate operation. So this is just a simple example where we've implemented a, a NAND of A and B here. And then it's uh, implemented with an OR of, uh, of uh, the input signal C and the p-type structure. So the only thing you got to keep in mind is that when we see these in series here, uh, we think of the logic down here being complemented and in parallel. So we'd end up with that logic function. So given something like this, you should be able to uh, say at least what function is being implemented. And uh, in class, we'll sort of ask for a time, uh, volunteers to go through a little timing diagram for that uh, previous logic gate. So here's where it gets a little bit more interesting now, where we have some uh, alternating logic, similar to before. We have an n-type precharge evaluate, p-type precharge evaluate, and then what type of logic families they can drive. So here's an example there where we have a, a what's called a, a pipeline NORA stage. This is sort of the, the idea behind uh, uh, adding a C-squared uh, MOS latch to a, a NORA logic block. So this is evaluated phi, and and, uh, and then the, the p-type logic block is evaluated on, on phi bar. So here's the simple example of an alternating logic with a c-squared MOS latch at the output. And there'd be some rules for cascading and latching. 
and you'd end up with, uh, I guess on this place, the complement of this function on this output, because this if, if essentially looks like a buffer when it's in evaluate phase. Uh, here's something you don't need to know at all. It's called zipper CMOS, but if you ever want to look up something historical, you could probably find something interesting there. Uh, this is a little bit more interesting as well. Now it's a dynamic cascode voltage switch logic, so the 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 variation is that before we looked at cascode voltage switch logic, and now this one just becomes dynamic, which means we just added a clock. Yeah, this is the, the basic schematic for it where uh, phi allows us to precharge, precharge these nodes, and then phi bar conditionally discharge these. And with uh, the cascode voltage switch logic, we get both out and out bar. Here's an example of the XOR and XNOR uh, implemented in the, in the circuit. So this is just a, a game with a little bit more detail, but put it, sort of put it in the should know category. This you know may you may see this uh, if you're ever working and designing some you know high speed logic gates. Uh, then some advantages and disadvantages. One of the things we talked about before it's it's a dual rail uh, uh, gate, so it may have some testing advantages which may show up later. And at this point in time, we'll take a brief break.